So. This is what I struggle with is that with crypto, because everything, well, I, I don't look at anything really past like the top 30 coins, mm. but within the top 30 coins, everything's following Bitcoin anyways. Mm. So it's like, if I'm going to buy Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and da, 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 I'm really, what I'm doing is just leveraging Bitcoin, right? I mean, that's exactly. really what it is. So with stocks, it's different stocks and commodities. Like you have stocks that are getting crushed on the day. You'll have ones that are going up on the day. And so it offers me so many more opportunities right now. Mm. Hopefully crypto starts to flow into that but right now at least you know some you guys know more about the smaller coins i know mm. nothing about that so i don't mm. need that mm. stuff for me. maybe bitcoin didn't bottom sec lawsuit against binance shakes btc bulls confidence Bitcoin's price dropped to $25,500 after the SEC announced a lawsuit against Binance and Changpeng Zhao, a move which also has BTC bulls wondering if the bottom is truly in. Bitcoin's price declined 5% in one hour on June 5th after the United States Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, filed a lawsuit against Binance on allegations of violating federal securities laws. Even though the $25,500 support held for Bitcoin, investors are still digesting the potential impacts of the regulatory action, which also involves Binance CEO Chengping CZ Zhao. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Gareth Soloway shares his perspective on the Bitcoin bottom and his price prediction for Bitcoin and also when he will buy more Bitcoin. I think I don't do a lot of research like fundamental research. It's more just just scanning charts. So I see. Yeah. So you're, not, you're not looking for the news for the fundamentals that are going to drive it. Wow. No, not at all. Not at all. Wow. Yeah. It's just it's just purely like what's making. Basically, I'm looking for extreme oversold, extreme overbought, and then the oversold coming into support. Yeah. And then looking for factors like time counts, like moving averages, fib retraces, all that stuff. And what I do is when when they all when all that stuff aligns, like let's say I get three of those things to align and it's all within like a tiny range, I'm like, okay, jackpot. Now that probably is gonna be eighty percent success rate trade. And so mm. that's where I'll start going in. But even when I go in, I still go in light. Like I've been wrong so many times in my early career and gotten smoked so many times that I just even when I'm like this this is an eighty percent winner, I still inch in because a lot of times it'll pierce and go a little lower, like mm -hmm. panic, right? Mm -hmm. Panic drives things mm -hmm. further than you expect, which then allows me to maneuver and still accumulate more. And then eventually you do get the bounce and mm -hmm. that's where you kind of mm -hmm. start to so make them. So mostly trend lines is what I'm, I'm focusing on, but then I'm trying to combine other factors. Like there's something called a time count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so the sevens, one of the amazing things about sevens is that it repeats over and over. Almost any religious text you look at, in fact, every religious text, you have seven days in a week, you have, I mean, it's just everywhere, which means it's psychologically inbred in us, right? Mm -hmm. And so things like that will occur. And so generally, you know that, okay, here's your seven count. You're going to get some sort of bounce. In this case, it's a bear flag. It's holding below. So now the, the odds are it's going to go lower, right? Mm -hmm. um, also three bar surges, one, two, three generally you'll get some sort of bounce there so i'm just looking at a lot of these like counts a lot of candlestick patterns. a lot of candlestick patterns right bear flags bull flags according to digital asset investment firm arca ceo jeff dorman the direct impact of an eventual shutdown of binance operations in the u.s is irrelevant furthermore non-criminal charges from the past should not destabilize binance's present international structures still Arca's CEO expects negative market sentiment to prevail as the crypto community cheers for CZ and Binance. Even if the SEC charges against Binance have little to no impact in the medium term, there's additional uncertainty coming from Digital Currency Group, DCG, and its subsidiary Genesis Capital, which filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on January 19th. I would probably, once we get down here, if, if, so if my buy range is here, Probably once we get down here, I'm putting my order out because especially with crypto, it can flush so quickly. Mm. And especially when I sleep, right? It might mm. hit when I sleep. And so for instance, if I'm looking to buy, so let's say chances are I'm short from a 29 and change, I'm gonna probably cover right in this area, right? Just because I, I take it the safe approach. I don't, need to, I don't need to squeeze the all the milk action. out of the car, exactly. right? I'm just happy with a good solid profit. Then I say, okay, well, if it gets ridiculously oversold and it hits here, now I'll put an order to buy here, I'll put an order in the middle, and I'll put an order right there. Mm -hmm. DCA in, right? Yeah. And so in general, it could bounce here, so I'll have some exposure. It could also pierce. Now I have a little bit more exposure. 
the chances of it not bouncing at all down to here very low, right? Mm -hmm. You know, at some mm -hmm. point, one of these lines, you're going to get a bounce. Mm -hmm. And so as long as I kind of space out my orders, then I let the, the charts kind of do their thing. And then obviously after that, mattering any high eyes, can any right. uh, breaker trends upside. My learning curve, I had to lose money for five years to, mm -hmm. to figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. People have like the cliff notes, right? Mm -hmm. like, like a shortcut. Your stuff, my stuff, it, it can shorten that learning curve. You're not going to like instantly someone's not going to be like, oh, I just did the course. I'm a, I'm a genius trader mm -hmm. making millions. Mm -hmm. But it's it's saying that, okay, instead of five years now, maybe it's a year. Exactly. And that's yeah. the key, right? So, so many lessons that we're we teaching. And then, and then you take it a step further and you say, okay, well, now they're not losing money for four more years, but they're also making money, which now compound that out over the course of their life. And it's literally a difference of millions of dollars mm. in their mm. pocket. Like mm. the financial freedom is incredible. So Traders now question whether Bitcoin will test the $25,000 resistance, a level unseen since March 17th. Considering that the U.S. debt ceiling crisis has been averted, the odds for a surprise Bitcoin price rally seem even more unlikely in the short term. Investors should be especially attentive if Bitcoin futures contract premiums flip negative or if increased costs for hedging using BTC options occur. Bitcoin quarterly futures are popular among whales and arbitrage desks. However, these fixed-month contracts typically trade at a slight premium to spot markets, indicating that sellers are asking for more money to delay settlement. As a result, BTC futures contracts in healthy markets should trade at a 5-10% to annualized premium, a situation known as contango, which is not unique to crypto markets. One of the realizations as a trader that every trader needs to figure out is like what type of trader you are. I am not a long-term trader. I am not good at sitting and just watching myself be up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100%. I can't do that because I'm too cognizant of how markets are where pullbacks will happen. Like if you're going into resistance, why wouldn't you take it off the table and then buy on the pullback? So for me, right? So if we're looking at this chart, let's just say we do get above this 30,500 level. So let's say, I don't know, let's say it goes up here like to 40. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is then I'll say, yeah, okay, well, area, uh, yeah, like let's say right here. Yeah. So then instead of me chasing up here, I'm just going to sit on my hands. But I know that this now is the line in the sand. This is the major support. So when it pulls back here, I buy. Yes. So it's just like, yes. it's like you never, I don't really believe you ever miss a chance. Mm. Like you may not capture the whole bull market. That's fine. You want to see more over here? This. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is the so, big one because it is, comes out of nowhere and it just happens. Like, yes. Yeah, so how can we help people with this? Got this it. is something that's, uh, I want to zoom out here. You know, really bad. Really bad. So like, so interesting. Yeah. So this is, this is a good example of what you're saying is that, Here's the, here was your 2017 high. Mm -hmm. You got up there, you kind of paused, and then you just ripped. So I was shorting like crazy here. Right, which makes sense. She's like, okay, well, that's your former major pivot. Mm. And all it did was basically pause here. And then it just ripped up. So in this situation, like, you know, I'm not buying here, I'm not buying here, I'm not buying here, I'm not buying here. I'd have to look closer at this. I'd have to go to the, the daily chart and see. I don't know if I flip over the daily, if it will still show, or we have to go back go all the way back to the run yeah but like the question but is, what's crazy though is we must that it means like when it got through that area it went right right but two years later it came back right and that's it, the crazy thing it's that uh understanding of the timing yep yeah, yeah and so this, this was a nice flag yeah th th that, yeah uh, to be honest i'm not sure if if i would have felt gutsy enough to do that but like the beautiful thing and i, and I hope everyone recognizes this like retail and and every new investor there's always another trade, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been like, oh, I missed that trade. That was the last trade of my life. I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. Like, no, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. always I another like opportunity. Time, but yeah. So like, so like here, right? All right. So you get this beautiful, and by the way, shoulder, head, shoulder. Mm -hmm. If you calculate the target, this was your exact low. I actually went on Kiko News and, and, and when I saw this, I said, if this line breaks the neckline, it will go right to here. It went within Straight dollars. back to full Africa. Yeah. Right. So, so as a technical trader, now you buy there. And now you're in position. Notice you close below, but barely, and then it just ripped, and then you can just ride it all the way up. So, is it a good time to invest in Bitcoin? And what's your prediction for Bitcoin in 2023? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.